100 million in grants, VAT cuts, even changing school holidays. These are some of the proposals in a new report to protect the tourism sector and keep it afloat during COVID-19. Now, this report was compiled by the Tourism Recovery Task Force. Its chairperson is Ruth Andrews. Good morning. Good morning, Mary. Now, you have a a three year strategy here. It's about long term recovery for the tourism industry. But but right now, the sector is really on the floor and it is a a case of trying to hold on. So you have to break this into into three parts, really. What is the immediate help that you can offer the sector to hold on? Well, you're absolutely right, Mary. And in developing uh, this long term recovery plan, it became very apparent very quickly that uh, it is important that we look to the survival phase first and foremost to ensure that uh, we can sustain businesses through the uh, more difficult period in the next six months so that we have the key strategic assets in place to strengthen the pace of recovery for tourism uh, when it comes and it will come at pace. Uh, And you're right, I suppose, looking to the survival measures that we have recommended uh, to the Minister, one of the first ones is a 120 million business continuity grant. Um, And that, I suppose, is to assist businesses, particularly those that have been greatly impacted due to the national lockdown initially, but also the ongoing uh, restrictions imposed to protect public public health. And have we seen uh, those have again been very strongly impacting on tourism over the last 12 hours and will do for the next month or so. So indeed we uh, need business continuity to protect key strategic assets and supply chains. There are businesses that just simply haven't been able to pivot towards domestic tourism and they have a great dependency on international tourism where 75% of our income comes from uh, within tourism. So those are businesses such as car hire, chauffeur drive, tour operators and visitor attractions. Businesses that have had an 80 to 90% fall off in their 2020 business. So they are strategic assets and we need to make sure that those very viable businesses that are currently vulnerable are supported in the short term. And and 100 million is an awful lot of money, but is 100 million, when you spread it across the range Mm -hmm. you're just talking about, 100 million doesn't sound an awful lot of money for a sector that at the moment, uh, you know, is, is trying to keep the door open. Sure. Well, it's only one of the survival measures that we've put forward. We've also put forward 150 million in a specific loan scheme uh, to be jointly administered by Fulcher Ireland and the Ireland Strategic Investment Fund. And again, it's been very clear that tourism businesses need to have tailored liquidity solutions to meet the unique challenges that the tourism businesses are facing. And also we've put forward uh, um, the extension of a a COVID adaptation fund. Uh, The Minister very successfully in the July stimulus uh, managed to to put fu- to get funding towards an adaptation fund but as we now move in the context of living with COVID and the living with COVID plan there will be a requirement for further adaptation to businesses what to does help that them mean? survive. What's, what's an adaptation fund? Well an adaptation fund would help to support businesses to actually uh, modify their businesses to be able to uh, facilitate and service um, customers so for instance one of the things that that we would suggest uh, needs to be considered supporting them to increase, let's say, outdoor space, uh, particularly for the likes of the restaurant and hospitality sector, um, where they are going to need to move towards that, um, and not just over the winter period, but as we move into the spring next do, do year. Do you think, Ruth, and you know this sector intimately, mm. do you think do. it's realistic that, that um, uh, the, the tourism, the hospitality sector can really function in an outdoor setting? in December, in January, in February. It, it, it's going to be difficult for sure but as we all know living with Covid is going to go beyond the winter period and we're looking into uh, the first six months of next year so we need those businesses to be ready and to have adapted so that they can actually uh, move and work in an environment whereby we're living with Covid but also being able to run our businesses. Now I've no doubt you have an eye to the budget when you're talking about <laughs> grant schemes and loan schemes and cuts to VAT but what is this about perhaps changing the school holiday period? 
Yes, indeed. Well, that's that's one of, I suppose, our uh, medium term measures. And and again, as we're all aware, we're going to be very dependent on our domestic holiday market. Um, And and we we would look not only to depend on it during a COVID environment, but in the longer term, there's real potential to increase our staycation market and the domestic market here. And one of the things that we've looked at is uh, where in other countries, they have changed the school holidays, particularly around periods of midterm, for instance, where you can spread the school holidays across regions, which means you're, you're extending the capacity across peak periods. Um, and as they've done in the likes of the UK and in, across Europe, indeed, um, this is very positively impacted on both the sector's occupancy and pricing. So do, do, you mean, do you mean that different counties would have different schools in different counties would have different midterm breaks, for example? Well, certainly uh, in terms of different counties or different regions across the country, that they would look to change uh, certain midterm breaks to spread them across a longer period. Ruth Andrews, chairperson of the Tourism Recovery Task Force, thank you very much for joining us.